everybody and welcome to Morzac EV, a channel dedicated to all things electric vehicles, electric vehicle charging and all related technologies. And we're really excited about this video today where we're talking about an installation that we did recently at a well-known company. Roll the credits. As I said, we recently did this quite large install at a well-known company. The company is Recticel. For those of you who don't know, Recticel are a manufacturer of insulation products. So it's a nice time with our business in the fact that they produce energy saving products and products which lower the carbon emissions of your homes and businesses. So that's a nice synergy between what they're doing and what we're doing. What worked really nicely on this project is the fact that we could come up with a solution that met all of Recticel's uh, technical requirements and their budget needs. So they wanted four three-phase 22 kilowatt sockets installing. They wanted it to have some back office software so they could potentially bill at the end user in the future. They wanted it to be easy to configure with their current IT systems. They wanted them floor mounting and they wanted an installation that looked good as this was a kind of benchmark product um, to show their green credentials. In terms of the physical location of the charge points, the charge points were on their car park outside along the side of the facility. Um, you'll see in the video they're about 25 meters from where the main distribution board was uh, installed. So the cables run out the building along under the cladding to where the charge points were located in the parking spaces. One of the things that came up in our, in our initial discussions was that they wanted some future proofing and they also wanted quite a large capacity because you know it's four 22 kilowatt sockets. So one of the things we agreed was that they would install a dedicated distribution board. So they installed this uh, Schneider 250 amp supply um, to a 250 amp dedicated distribution board. And that's where we're going to take the charge points from. Gives plenty of room for expansion in the future um, and it's more than adequate for the current needs. They also had a tight deadline to get at least one of the charge points working. This wasn't really possible within the, the time constraints, um, everything going on and Christmas. So what we did initially was install a temporary charge point, which was just a seven kilowatt single charging unit. Um, this was installed using the first fixed cabling and that carried them over to the uh, installation of the final units. So after some initial discussions um, of different options, the charge points that they went for were two of these quantum 22 kilowatt super fast charging units. These are manufactured by Rolex. We have a separate video on this. You can click on the, uh, the card above to see that video. It goes into a little bit more detail on the possibilities with that charge point. So in terms of the exact um, options they selected on the charger, like I say, four 22 kilowatt sockets, each unit was a double socket unit. Um, it comes as standard with this lighting, which is nice to illuminate the sockets when people want to charge at night because the, the facility itself runs around the clock. So people are turning up at all different hours for their shifts um, and they might want to charge the cars at all times of the day and night. One of the things that they specifically mentioned was that they're under a corporate banner for their IT systems. So it's difficult getting approval for software and for things to be added to their networks, there's firewalls. So we went for the GPRS option, which means the units have got their own built-in SIM card, which communicates to the cloud directly. And this enables them to bypass their IT system altogether. Um, and included in the purchase is three years of the SIM card use, as well as the back office software. So 
there's no complications going through their IT system and the portal for configuring the tariffs and the charge point usage itself looking at the usage is all built into a web platform so it means they can just access it via the internet again no specialist software required no problems with IT makes the whole thing a lot cleaner and more simple so one of the things required by the Quantums is they don't have an open pen fault detection unit built into the units. So they either need an earth rod or a separate pen fault detection unit. Now, as you can see from the footage, uh, the car park itself is a large concrete car park. So getting an earth rod in would be very difficult. And in any way, the building structure is a metal clad building structure. So the car parking spaces that are adjacent to that, um, you can't have, you'd be touching two different earthing systems at the same time. So the best option was to go for a pen fault detection unit. So we installed these two 64 amp Matties. They're three phase devices, so they work okay on a three phase system. And they'll disengage the live, neutral and earthing conductors in the event of a pen fault. One of the things that we did across the two charge points was rotate the phases. So imagine that you have cars charging which don't charge at three phase. And there are a lot of cars that will not charge at 22 kilowatt. They'll only charge at seven maximum. You've got to check with the manufacturer's specifications to find that out. So imagine that you have a bunch of cars all plugged in charging at seven kilowatt. Now automatically, if a car doesn't charge at three phase, it uses L1 on the charge point. So if you've got four cars all charging at seven kilowatt, that loads up one phase with 28 kilowatts. It's quite a lot of load on one phase and then nothing on the others. So the phase is really unbalanced. So what we do is on the first charge point, L1 to L1, L2 to L2 and L3 to L3. Then on the next charge point, everything is wired up correctly up till the charge point itself, where L1 is put on L2, L2 is put on L3, and L3 is put on L1. This means that if you've got two cars or four cars charging at seven kilowatts, it's spread across two phases. And then down the line, if the customer decides to add a third charge point, this would be rotated again. So this spreads the load, helps balance the phases, and make sure uh, when you do start having to use load management, it means that when cars are charging on a single phase, it gives the maximum possible capacity. As part of the installation, we were also contracted to install safety measures in terms of crash protection. After a discussion with the customer and looking at the site, we decided that we needed firstly crash protection in front of the charge points in the form of these hoops to stop a vehicle impacting the charge point. But we also, for convenience and an additional level of safety, we installed these heavy duty bump stops. So these are sat far enough forward so that the back wheels will engage with the bump stop before they can possibly hit the crash hoop and the charge point, meaning that no vehicles are damaged and no charge points are damaged. And also the crash hoops are less likely to be damaged from a vehicle touching them. So I hope you liked the video. If you are interested in our charge point services for domestic or commercial installations, such as the one you've just seen in the video, Contact us on our social media or through our website. There in there. If you like the video, give us a cheeky thumbs up on that like button and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of future charge point videos, Tesla videos, and any other related content. Enjoy the B-roll and thanks for watching.